Today, the Republican-led North Carolina legislature is preparing to vote to override a veto of its abortion ban. The state House Speaker's chief of staff tweeted out the timing for the vote yesterday. The ban prohibits abortions after 12 weeks, with some exceptions for rape, incest, or to save the mother's life. Democratic Governor Roy Cooper vetoed the legislation, but Republicans hold a slim supermajority in the House and could override his decision. Republicans achieved that supermajority just last month when then Democratic Representative Tricia Cotham switched parties. She then voted in favor of the abortion ban. Republicans will likely need every single member of their party to vote to override the veto, something that's not necessarily assured. And Governor Cooper joins us now. Uh, first of all, Governor, do you think Republicans will be able to override your veto? Well, they certainly intend to, but we know that a number of Republicans promised their constituents that they would mm -hmm. protect women's reproductive freedom. And we've been pushing this last week to get people in their district, uh, people they may know, like ministers and doctors and friends, to tell them to keep their promise and have the courage to stand up to the Republican leadership. Uh, they only have a one-vote supermajority in the House and a one-vote supermajority in the Senate. And all we need is one Republican to stand up mm -hmm. in either chamber to stop this bad ban in North Carolina. <laughs> I mean, do you have any? I mean, what happens if, if they get the numbers? Well, obviously, we would have a disastrous abortion ban come into effect in North Carolina. We would do everything we could through the courts, through rulemaking, uh, to try to blunt the damage. But this legislation was billed as a reasonable compromise, and it's not. Uh, it cuts off medication abortion at 10 weeks. It creates obstacle courses for women having mm -hmm. to be in person three times to be able to obtain medication abortion. And this hurts uh, many women who live in rural areas, who are poor, who work hourly jobs, who are already mothers. Uh, we already have become an access point in the South for many women because of the restrictive bans passed in other states. This has created waiting lists. And we know that with this compressed time period, with the cost that it takes a woman to be able to get there and the time, uh, this is going to effectively ban abortions for many women in North Carolina, even inside of 12 weeks. This is not Absolutely. the kind of thing we need. <laughs> Right-wing politicians no. should not be in the exam room with women and their doctors. And we need to leave the medicine to doctors and the decisions to women. And in North Carolina, uh, we have been able to protect women's reproductive freedom for four years because I've been able to veto all of the bad bills. We've had enough Democrats to sustain those vetoes for the first time now because of this party switch and because of the last elections. We are facing a supermajority in North Carolina by one vote. Let's just hope that party politics doesn't rule the day here. And let's hope yeah. that one of these Republicans will decide to do the right thing, do what they know is right. This legislation was kept under lock and key, was introduced in the middle of the night, was passed 42 hours later with no amendments allowed, with no mm -hmm. public input. How is that a reasonable compromise? It's obviously not. And it, it only took Governor, him 42 hours to turn the clock back 50 years. And that's frustrating for people in North Carolina. It's not what we want. I want to ask you about that party switch you mentioned. Um, we, we mentioned the lawmaker that gave North Carolina Republicans a supermajority. Uh, this is Representative Tricia Cotham. And she was a Democrat and just switched parties. But long before her switch, here she is in 2015 talking about her own past abortion. Take a look. The time-sensitive medical process, procedures, that I had to endure began immediately. And it was awful. And it didn't work. This decision was up to me, 
my husband, my doctor, and my God. It was not up to any of you in this chamber. So that woman who made the case for her own health care and her own abortion voted in favor of this ban. She has become a Republican and voted in favor of this ban. What happened? Well, and that same access would be denied to many women in North Carolina. Uh, and in fact, earlier in the year, she was one of all of the Democrats who sponsored legislation to codify Roe v. Wade, which, of course, never got a hearing in the supermajority Republican legislature. I don't know what happened. She had talked about wanting more freedom of thought. Well, now it's time to have that freedom of thought. This is obviously something that she has cared about for a long time. And what I'm hoping is that she will stand up to her new party, just like she stood up to her old one, and do the right thing, do what her constituents want. This is a largely blue Democratic district, and you need to keep your promises. But that also goes for other Republicans. This this legislation was meant as a disguise. Mm. Uh, they call it a reasonable 12-week so ban in order to protect all of these Republicans who promise to protect reproductive freedom. But in fact, when you get into the details of the bill with all of the burdens and restrictions and hoops that women have to jump through, that doctors have to jump through, and that clinics have to jump through, we know that this is going to operate as an effective ban for many women in our state. And it's not right. These politicians should not be making these decisions. These decisions no. should be left mm. to women. And in North Carolina, we're going to fight and continue to fight for women. We will never, ever back down when it comes to women's health. Governor, polls suggest that 57% of North Carolinians either want to keep the existing 20-week limit or actually want access to abortion extended. So how do you account for the fact that the Republican legislature seems to be so out of step with what voters in your state want? Technologically diabolical super gerrymandering. North Carolina probably has some of the worst gerrymandered districts in the country. And therefore, I can get elected statewide, yet you see a supermajority legislature in, in, in our state. Uh, and in fact, when our state Supreme Court last year said that these partisan gerrymanders were in violation of our state constitution and had to redraw the congressional maps, they ended up being seven Democrats and seven Republicans that we've sent to Washington. Now we have a Republican Supreme Court that has turned that on its head. And this legislature is now busy redistricting legislative seats as well as congressional seats. And I fear that we're going to see uh, super gerrymandered districts across the board. We need independent redistricting commissions. I've promised many times that if Democrats ever get control, we're going to institute uh, independent commissions. Uh, there's no perfect way to draw districts, but this is not the right way to do it because it no. clearly does not reflect what the people of North Carolina think on this issue and many others. We're having a battle over public education right now in our state. Uh, they're trying to choke public education with private school vouchers for millionaires and cutting taxes. Uh, it, can, it goes on and on, and, it, and it's frustrating. But we're going to fight every single day in this state. We have the, one of the best states in the country. Uh, we're the number one state in the country for business. We believe that we're going we're to continue to work to do the best that we can to protect women's health in our state. Democratic Governor Roy Cooper of North Carolina, thank you very much. We'll be watching. And